okay. There we go. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Um, hope everybody's doing well today. It's Thursday, Fluid Art Day. Yay! Uh, this is what we're going to be doing today. And it's a lot prettier than when it's showing up on the camera. These lights are making everything kind of fade out the color. It's um, a lot of blowing. <laughs> so if uh, you have a hair dryer that is um, has a cool element on it instead of just a warm or hot, that would help a great deal. If not, it can be done by yourself using a straw. And this straw is one of those that you can bend. Really helps out. Thank you everybody for ordering some of these sand earrings. That um, was a really nice seller. I can make more. It takes a couple of days for them to cure, so the turn around time. I don't know why my puppies are barking. Come here. Come here. Okay, y'all sit down. <laughs> Somebody's wanting to get in on the show today. Yeah. Are you going to help me breathe or blow? Okay, I'm going to set this out of the way. We have a little bit of paint to mix up, too. There we go. All right. Um, let's see. This is from Michaels, and it's one of their artist paints. It's really nice. You can usually pick them up on sale for about two fifty. It's a four ounce tube. So what I'm going to do. It's too thick to use for fluid art, so we're going to, ooh, brand new bottle. We're going to mix some Floetrol with it to get it the right consistency. It's pretty thick. It's a nice paint. This color, I'm going to put about two ounces in here. This color is called metallic leaf green so that'll give a little bit of interest to the color the flow troll this right here is for latex base paints this is a self leveler and it also will thin your paint down without it losing its body and I keep it in a little honey cup or bottle. It tends to clump up after you use about half of it. So keep you a tea strainer handy and just run it through the tea strainer into another container. And with the artist paints, since they're so thick, add about a three to one ratio. And this will take just a few minutes to mix up, but you'll get an idea that um, what you want for your painting and the consistency. This is a beautiful color. This is going to be a little time consuming today because it is a technique in a design that I'm going to do instead of just showing you how to do it. It's just going to be a little bit more design. Okay, it doesn't take very long to mix this up. And it's just about there. It's still a little bit too thick. So I'm going to add some more Floetrol in here.
and I'll add some silicone to it also. That will give you the cells, as they call them. Oh, this is really pretty. It has kind of a gold shimmer to it. So let's see. That's nice. Nice, steady stream. That's what you want. So to add the silicone, this is a heavy duty. There you go. It is available in an oil. I'm just going to give it a couple of squirts. Mix that in real good. All right, that one's ready. The next one, and this will be the last one we have to mix. But I like for everybody to see this process, and not everybody watches from the beginning. So this one is an apple barrel. It's a craft paint. It's going to be a lot thinner than your artist grade paints. So you're not going to use as much flow trawl in this one as you did the artist grade paint. Okay, add the flow trawl. On July 31st at 11 o'clock, I'm so excited about this, I will be teaching a design your own jewelry class here in Fernandina at the Shady Ladies Art Studio down on 8th Street in Fernandina. It's a wonderful class. I'll have all the materials. All you'll need to do is just bring your smile. Get in touch with me, PM me, and I can give you further details. See how smooth and the way that runs off? That's perfect. We're going to add some silicone to this. We're fixing to get a nice little thunderstorm here in Fernandina. Okay, that one's ready. And what I'm going to do is this one here, I picked these little bottles up at the craft store. They come with a different top, one that has a whole, it's the flip top. And you can pick up, that's the kind of lid it has. You can pick up these other little lids, and what it, it has a tiny hole at the tip. They're wonderful for being able to control your paints. And I'm just going to pour some of this in here. There we go. One thing for sure, live videos, y'all get to see all the bloopers as they happen. <laughs> you don't have to wait till the end of the show. <laughs> okay, here we go. First thing we're going to do to our canvas is put your push pins in to get it up off of the table. Make sure it's nice and tight. It's free of any kind of debris on the front. It's nice and level. Let's move that out of the way. Get some space. Here we go. And I'm going to put you, put the camera towards the table, the work table now, so you'll be able to see what's going on.
And I might not talk very much through this video because I'll be getting into the Zen zone. There you go. But I'll look up. There we go. Okay. First thing we're going to do, this is white gloss paint from the, your, your crafts area. Mix it with 50% Floetrol. 50% paint, 50% Floetrol. Because it's a craft paint. It's not the artist grade paint. I'm going to squirt this all over. I wonder why that's running out that way. Oh, it's got a little... There we go. Make sure you get the canvas completely covered. There we go. We'll cover up the keyboard because it puts a reflection. There we go. All right, this is a Wilton cake decorating tool for your icing. And it's a nice tool for smoothing everything out. They come in different sizes. You want to make sure your paint is all over the canvas. Looks like we're going to need some more paint on this. Yeah, we're going to need some more paint. Our puppy, Penny, is up underneath my feet. I think the thunder is scaring him. Let's see. I'm going to take this one. I'm trying to get this as level as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect because with the flow trawl added into it, it will help level things off. It'll help level the paint, get the sides real good. Just about done. Oh, got a little blip of something in here. Take that out. There we go.
Okay, we are just about ready to start. Canvas is all covered. You don't want any really bare spots because you want your paint to be able to flow. All right, here we go. Let's see. All right, we have Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. And this is an Apple Barrel Bright Blue. We're going to use another metallic blue apple barrel. I have Pathaleo Green from Artist Loft, Spring Green, and the other two greens Artist Loft Metallic Green, and then the apple barrel New Shamrock. Not sure if we're going to be using all of them, but just in case. So to begin with, we're going to take the bright blue, shake it, hi Sherry, good to see you. For some reason I have a little box in front of the texting area. Okay, here we go. And I think I'm going to do this area and then go blow out from that out that way. So, what I'm going to do is just take and pour a little puddle. This is a big canvas. We're going to use quite a bit of paint on this. Now this is a blow dryer that has a cool setting and it's going to make some noise but I'm going to spread the paint around a little bit. Gave us a good base. Hi, McKenna. Good to see you, honey. Good to see everybody. All right, so that gave us a good base, and that spreads the paint out pretty good. So next we're going to do a few more colors. This is the metallic blue. This is a little bit darker color. It will help give us some depth. And I think I'm going to put these like in dots where the petals are going to go. And it's always best to do your amounts in odd numbers instead of even numbers. It just looks balanced better. So I'm going to take the straw, and I might not be able to see it, because the colors are just about 
the same. Um, when we get to the lighter colors, you'll be able to see. But I'm going to blow and I'm going to wiggle the straw back and forth. And see that helps form your petals. Well, yeah, it's raining nicely outside. Now I'm not going to worry too much about this splatter up here. I can put a leaf over it and it'll hide it. So that gives us a good form. Now to have a little bit of a um, little bit more contrast. This is the metallic cobalt blue. I'm going to put another dot in each of the petals. There we go. And we're going to blow this too. So what I'm doing when I start at the beginning of the dot, I'm blowing straight out. And as I go out, I will, I will wiggle the straw back and forth. Okay. So now we're ready for our center. I'm going to put a little bit of white. Then go back with the um, metallic blue. So what we did there is I petaled the white in the middle and then the blue on top of that and blew it in between the petals. So it gives it that center look to it.
And we're going to leave that alone for just a few minutes. I want to see what it does because the paint, because it has silicone in it, is going to continue to change. And we can work on the leaves a little bit. But we're going to leave this alone for a few minutes. I'm pretty well happy with it. I'll hold it up so you can get a better picture of it. Hopefully one day soon, I will have a better setup for y'all to be able to enjoy these videos better. There we go. Okay. So to do a leaf, we're going to start off with the Pathaleo Green. And because these little bottles, you put ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise in them for your picnics and stuff like that. But they're also wonderful to use for this type of work. And what I'm going to do is just kind of draw like an outline of a leaf. We're going to cover that blue up. There we go. And go down the middle. Give it a little bit of veining. All right, for some contrast, we'll use the spring green. I'm just going to put this in, fill the little areas up. We're going to use some of this new shamrock from Apple Barrel. Just going to put a couple of dots here and there. Just to give it a little bit of interest. And where's the straw? Here's the straw. I might need to do this a little bit. It's kind of sinking in. There we go. All right.
that little spot's being stubborn. Let's put some of this on it. Okay, so we have the form of our leaf, and you can take either a popsicle stick or this is a very, very, very small ended crochet needle that you use for knitting, crocheting. And then you have, you can use a palette knife, something with a small end to it. And what we're going to do now. So I'm going to lightly put it on the canvas where the leaf is starting and then just drag it through the paint. And what this does is it creates a flow of the color, gives it an illusion of the stem. You can do it to the outside a little bit of veining. You can do as much as you like if you like it all that way or a little just a tad. It's your painting. There we go. Like I said, the paint's going to move. It's going to do its own thing. So we'll check back on it in a few minutes. But I think we've got a really good beginning. Now, let's see how our flower is. That dark blue is kind of floating to the bottom. So there's not a whole lot of contrast there. I'm going to take some bright yellow. I'm going to blow this white out a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to give it a puddle of yellow. I put some more white in the middle. There we go. Yeah, that gave it some punch right there. Yeah, Sherry, please, anybody that tries anything or has your own method of doing things, yeah, go for it. I'd love to see it. So that gave us a lot of punch on that in that flower now. It's coming coming alive. All right, let's do another leaf. Let's see where is our color. Here it is. Um, we'll do one down here.
The rain is coming down good. One thing about fluid art is it's kind of an abstract. So you don't have to be perfect with it. It needs a good composition. In other words, things need to be placed where they're like balanced and you have a focus point and then you have stuff in the background that's kind of a filler. So keep that in mind. And sometimes fluid art, depending on what you're doing, takes on a life of its own. You might have one thing in mind that you're gonna do, but it, sometimes it ends up being whatever it wants to be, and you just need to go with it. Just go with it. So here we go. All right, there we go. I'm gonna blow this up into it and then I'll blow the blue back over it. That way it'll look like the flowers on top of the leaf. Okay, now let's take our little drawing method here and we're going to give it a stem. I have a puppy up underneath my feet because he does not like thunder. We are getting a really good rain. I'm gonna come back up here and play with this a little bit after it's had time to settle. Make sure you wipe off your drawing utensil, whatever you end up using between each time. So it'll help keep your colors from getting muddy. Okay. I see this flower is kind of losing its composure here. So I'm going to go with I'm going to give it a little bit more blue paint, blow it back up. Oops, show you how to do that. Let's see, I'm not sure if anything's going to go there yet. 
So I'm just going to pick it up with my tool. There. Never know that happened. Okay, here we go. So each time you're layering the color, it adds more depth. We're going to go back with the cobalt blue. It kind of has a bluish green, kind of a peacock color to it. It's really pretty. There, we got the center back, and we got some depth in it. Um, I'd like to do three leaves. Let, let's see, let's put one, yeah, let's put one like right over here. So we're grabbing our pathetic. Pethio, <laughs> Pethalo green. Spring green. There we go. Some shamrock green. Just going to put some dots in it every once in a while. Give it a little bit of extra color. There we go. Stroller stem. Few veins.
You see how when I wiggle the straw, it kind of gives it that little squiggly look? Adds a little bit of interest. I think we're going to do go through here again. That helped define those that stem. There we go. That's better. Okay. And that is one method of creating a hibiscus flower. Um, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Now to do the center, we could go with a red or a yellow, but I've got the yellow on hand. And what I'm going to do is put just a little bit of yellow paint on the end of the popsicle stick and touch it to give three, hopefully I have enough paint on here for three dots. I might have to give it a, a bigger white center. There we go. Yeah, it might end up needing some more white. I'm going to see what that does. Well, this paint will stay dry, or excuse me, stay wet for a good 24 hours. You'll be able to see what parts of it are dry because it'll start flattening out and it won't be as shiny. But while it is in this stage, you can still play with it. I've had some where I wasn't really happy with what went on um, the next day and I went ahead and put fresh paint on top of it where I was designing and it ended up being just fine. So I would give a little caution. Oh, I don't want to do that yet. We're going to do some yellow. Give the background a little bit of interest. There we go. If I had an air gun, this would be really easy to do with the air gun. And I might just invest in that. But you, as you see, it just gives a little bit of extra color to it. And I'm kind of doing this fast because I know our time is running on maybe an hour of this video. This here, I was going to make like a little vine. There we go. I 
take your drawing stick, run through it. Go off to the side with it. Okay, what we're going to do with this, blow it a little. I'm going to start at the top and work our way down. There you go. So that could either be a vine or some small leaves. We can put a little bit of blue in here, make it look like a bud. There, and we'll do one over here. A little bit of that green on top. There we go. And there you go. So, let's see. I really appreciate y'all hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you watching. If you really like the video, please share it with your friends. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it right side up instead of upside down. And we have a drawing this coming Saturday. So there you go. So probably what I will end up doing after I turn the video off I'll go ahead and do some more vines in here and some more buds. Probably play with the flower a little bit more. Give it a little bit more definition. You can take your tool and run out here like this. That way you can define your petals. Oops. And when it digs into the canvas, while this paint is still wet, it'll go back together. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera up. See who's joined in. Hi, Roseanne. Thanks for joining. Thank you. This is... um. This is kind of like a stress relief and just so satisfying to be able to see what you can do with puddles of paint <laughs> and a straw and blowing. Um, if you have an air gun, go for it. You could probably do this in about 15, 20 minutes. But um, hi, Betty. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. I really appreciate you hanging out with me today, and I apologize for this being so long, but it's a lot of fun, and I get carried away. Remember, the drawing is this Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. All you have to do is share Magic Mix's page. I really appreciate it, and um, we're going to have, we're going to draw two names this Saturday. We've not ever done this before, but y'all have, I'm so appreciative for your sharing and your comments and your encouragement and your support that um, I hope to do a little bit of extra something each time we have a drawing. And so we're going to draw two names and I'll post the jewelry, a picture of the jewelry of, of what we can select from or what y'all, the winners can select from. Um, this afternoon or tomorrow morning 
and um, that's it that's about it for today so thank you all and bye for now happy Thursday right it is oh one more thing I'll give y'all a heads up but I will post it later there will not be any classes next week I'm going on a hiatus and I will not have any internet service probably where I'm going to be or very limited so I hope everybody has a good week and I will check in with y'all every now and then hopefully and um, we'll see what happens I'll see you the next the following week okay bye for now